So let's move to radio frequency ablation with Dr. Krokidis uh, uh, in small primary ilar endophytic renal tumors. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do thank the organizing committee. I'm delighted to be here and be part of the uh, Kidney Cancer Association. So I'm going to argue uh, in favor of the use of uh, RFA in uh, hyla endophytic renal tumors. Uh, I would quickly introduce um, the treatments that uh, you all know about. It's a uh, very well um, uh, known um, the fact that uh, refractomy was introduced by Robson in the 70s and then evolved in laparoscopic techniques, robotic, we've seen, minimal invasive. And then uh, laparoscopic ablation was introduced with the uh, use of thermal techniques uh, in aim for nephron sparing treatments, and this evolved to percutaneous image guide ablation. However, if we think that we uh, deserve the, um, um, the idea of treating uh, tumors with uh, ablation, we have to look at the history of medicine and think about uh, Hippocrates and uh, his statement uh, 400 years before Christ that uh, whatever cannot be excised can be uh, cured by, by cautery or burned. And uh, he was definitely ahead of his times. However, we don't really know what he meant by cautery. Was he really that ahead? What, was he thinking of uh, heat or ice? And uh, was he thinking of the modern device that we have and the dilemmas that appear in the modern practice? Well, if um, we think about RF, we have to uh, look at the technique and how is this uh, technology uh, resolving the tumor. It is based on the use of radiofrequency waves that oscillate the um, um, ions of the tissue, and this ionic agitation causes uh, frictional heat, and this th motion energy is becoming thermal energy, and it um, uh, cooks the um, tissue. This is a very uh, precise and repetitive cooking, and it's very effective. It was introduced uh, nearly 20 years ago in cl clinical practice, uh, in an intraoperative setting by a Belgian group, and then the first percutaneous case was done in 1998 uh, at the Massachusetts General Hospital. Since then, a lot of uh, series were published with fantastic results for small renal tumors, with nearly 100% uh, success rate in, uh, in long-term results. If we see the uh, uh, cancer survival um, score, we, we see that um, uh, for up to three years, uh, we have uh, very good results uh, that uh, excess 90% in multiple uh, studies. So this is an established treatment for small renal tumors. Also for uh, single kidneys, we have seen in our experience, by, in Geisel and Thomas's, that uh, after 56 months of mean follow-up, the results were very good in terms of oncologic control. The setting for RFA is very simple. We need the scanner. This is the scanner at Adenbrooks. And uh, we need the generator, which is uh, located here. The patient uh, is usually uh, anesthetized by local anesthesia or conscious sedation. He's position prone in the scanner. We need, a, we need a monitor to identify where our needles are. And uh, if you see these pictures, you can, this is uh, an enhancing lesion. Uh, it's a typical RCC in terms of imaging. And then uh, uh, after calibrating uh, and positioning the needle in the exact uh, middle of the tumor, um, ablation is performed. And uh, as you may see, there's no enhancement in the tumor, and that indicates uh, treatment. And that's how tumors look uh, three years after being ablated. There's a scar uh, on, the, uh, on this picture that shows that there's no enhancement, and this is um, a very good result. If you have problems in terms of uh, other uh, organs, like in this case, the bowel is um, uh, dangerously near the tumor, also in the prone position where the, the patient is positioned for his treatment, and in this case, we'd like to displace the bowel, and we do that with a bit, little bit of uh, dextrose, 5%, which is non-ionic solution, and uh, radiofrequency ablation is not transmitted, and uh, there, therefore we can ablate safely the lesion. Thermal ablation, uh, in our recent met published meta-analysis, has shown to be very effective. It's, uh, uh, we have now long-term data. We don't have any randomized controlled trials, but from the existing trials, we can see that this is 
uh, a technique that it is comparable to surgical techniques nowadays. Well, if we go back to Hippocrates, is that all? Is, that, is RFA perfect then? Well, we have to think about central lesions. What's going on with central lesions? And this is the argument of today's debate. So if we think about the location of lesions uh, within the kidney, the upper part, we can say that it's clear RFA territory. We can ablate every lesion up to four centimeters, of course. Where the lower, th lower line is definitely an area where most of radiologists would see it as a very dangerous area to treat. However, experts in the field have stated in the past that the RFA is not influenced by the position and the location of the lesion. It has to be performed safely. And uh, this trial has shown that uh, in uh, 41 patients, 41 tumors in 39 patients with endophytic location, uh, ablation was performed safely with very good results at uh, approximately three years. But how can we ablate a central lesion? Well, we have to protect the pelvic cell system the way we protect the bowel. And in this case, we have to position ureter extent and perform cooling of the pelvic cell system with the use of dextrose, which is uh, perfused uh, from, from, uh, uh, from, from the ureter extent. And in this case, a uh, cent central lesion, which is located here, which uh, can be considered as a challenging case with the use of a ureteric stent and perfusion of the pelvic cell system, we can ablate, this is our needle, that is, is uh, in the center of the lesion, and we can perform a safe ablation of this small renal tumor without damaging the pelvic cell system. In similar case, in a more central location, the ureteric extent is positioned, pelo perfusion, and uh, our needle is positioned here, and a very good result at one year. So RFA is feasible for central lesions. But is it better than cryo? Well, cryo, we've seen that uh, is based on a different principle. It's based on uh, formation of ice. It's more controlled. We can see it with imaging modalities. Uh, ice is usually performed extracellularly, and uh, the, the cells are, are um, uh, killed by uh, dehydration, and then intracellular ice is performed and coagulation occurs due to thrombosis of the small vessels. The cryoablation has been for a long time uh, in the urological field. However, the first percutaneous case was performed in 2001, and this is the publication. And uh, as you may see, this is the ice ball, and this is how uh, pictures of cryoablation look. Since then, a lot of uh, debate was was uh, on what would be the ideal ablation uh, technique, and a lot of publications were uh, appeared. And in 2008, this meta-analysis has, uh, uh, has uh, compared the two uh, modalities in a very large number of patients. It's actually 1,375 patients. And uh, patients were coming from a lot of institutions. Cryoablation was performed mostly intraoperatively, whereas radiofrequency ablation was performed um, percutaneously. And uh, there was no uh, true difference between the two modalities. So uh, from, uh, what, from the data that we have until now, uh, the two methods are completely comparable. Also, in a more recent publication, 2012, Regarding renal function in patients with already impaired renal function, we have seen that there's no difference of the uh, EGFR at one month, at one year post ablation of both modalities. We need also to consider that cryotherapy is a little bit more demanding in terms of technical aspects. This is the setting, and uh, it's definitely um, time consuming to organize. It's definitely uh, demanding in terms of technical knowledge and money. It's definitely more expensive than radiofrequency ablation. And it's not without complications. Well, we need to think that uh, we have to position multiple needles and there's risk of bleeding. There's no track ablation, so there's risk of seeding. The cost is definitely significant, as mentioned. It's time consuming and requires significant expertise. And there's also always a risk of thermal injury of the skin. So if we have to compare between the two modalities, we have to say that uh, uh, even though cryo is the new thing, 
the number of probes, the multiple number of probes, the significant technical effort and cost, and the fact that we cannot ablate the track make this modality less appealing. Whereas RFA has established results the last 10 years for small renal tumors, it is uh, feasible for central lesions, and the cost is low, and the technical effort is also not significant for an experienced operator. So, if we go back to Hippocrates, we can stay, say that he would say today that RFA is feasible for central lesions. RFA is effective for small renal tumors. RFA is cheaper than cryoablation. And RFA is more straightforward than cryo. So probably he would suggest that uh, we could treat every lesion with RFA if it's smaller than 4 centimeters. We can reserve cryo and multiple probes for larger lesions. We have to use RFA if we want to be cost effective. And if we want to treat challenging cases that cannot be treated in another way, then probably cryo is the best solution. Thank you very much.